Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, BMB Flyer here. Uh, as you've probably seen, I've got a few other how to make bases and do kind of fun things with chemical pools and lava and water, uh, but those involve using an airbrush. This one is going to be, let's try to do a chemical pool using regular old brushwork. So I've got the base prepared, I primed it, and then I threw a brown um, army painter uh, strong tone wash over it to kind of get some stuff into the recesses and the cracks. So what I've got on my palette paper here uh, is some model color chocolate brown and some neutral gray. Uh, what I'm going to use those for is to get the color of the rocks kind of squared away. So I'm going to add some water to these because I don't really want them to be super thick. I'm not looking for coverage here, I'm looking more for just overall tone. So I'm going to thin those down pretty good and then we're going to start applying the brown um, just to get the edges established and then we'll move on from there and start kind of incorporating some gray. And what we're trying to do is get kind of just a little bit of variation in the stone, make it a little bit more appealing. So let's see, let's go a little thinner. There we go. I'm gonna put this over the whole thing. And you see, I got a little bit of gray in the brush already, which is fine because now I can kind of incorporate some of that into the stone and make it look a little more natural. Just rubbing my brush off on some paper towel just to kind of allow for the blending. I'm not looking to spend a whole bunch of time on it because it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of evaporation and all that. So but now I know that the consistency of the, the paint is good, and I can kind of work this, this brown over these lighter areas where the, the wash obviously you know got into the recesses, but some of these raised areas are just a, a little too um, light colored, a little too um, beige or gray or whatever color you might have used. We're gonna dry brush over them, but then it's gonna be you know us accentuating those highlights where we want them to be versus you know, just areas where the wash didn't didn't go on either as smoothly as we would have liked, or in areas that just don't look right being that bright. So, this is going to help us draw down that those missed areas. I'm not working to be super careful. This is this is very very basic. Just get it on there and figure out if it's uh, if it's what you want, and if not, then adjust. So. I'm not trying to jam it into the recesses. Obviously, I wanted that wash in there for a reason. But if you find out that you just maybe you weren't happy with how the wash ended up, you know, you can throw another another quick one over the, over this after you're done. If you decide you want it to be a little darker, you can also wait until after the dry brush is done too to kind of see how the highlights look and if you're happy with that. So, so that's going to start to to dry. While that's drying, we are going to use peacock green, which is the base color that was used during the, the airbrush tutorial. It's a Reaper Master Series Peacock Green. And since this is going in between the base, uh, the rocks and recesses, no reason why we can't put this on right now. It's a little thick. Still using the same brush. And this is just to give us a initial green base color to work from as we start building up the other colors to get a somewhat of a chemical pool effect here. So I'll let that dry and we'll probably come back and give a second coat of that peacock green just to shore it up a little bit. I might go in and add a little bit more gray in some of the gray areas to kind of lighten it up just a little bit but let that dry and we'll come back and start working some more color. All right, as you can see, the second coat of Peacock Green has uh, smoothed out for the most part. And then you can see I've added some gray and uh, blended in some more of the brown onto the top of the stone. I've also gone around and touched up some areas where the uh, wash and the paint didn't get into. There were some little white areas that just had primer. So uh, I just used a darker color, a little bit of black mixed with some of the brown to add a little bit more variation. So now, before I get into adding the chemical effects, because I want the chemical 
pool to kind of look like it's risen and fallen against these rocks so I'm gonna put some on the sides but before we do that uh, I want to dry brush and highlight everything the stone the way that I or the rocks the way that I want to so I'm gonna use some uh, game color stonewall gray and we're just gonna dry brush that on there picking up the textures helps if you use a dry brush there we go kind of going in one direction just to highlight one side and pick up more of the raised areas on this cork and then as I go around I'm just going to hit the outer edges, kind of bringing them inward, just to make sure they get some highlight. Don't forget in between any cracks and other areas you might have on there. And then now, for the outer edges, I'm going to pull down this way so that it picks up the areas that you would think would catch the most light. If you have to go a little bit sideways just because of the water or if there's something kind of in the way, that's fine. Or, you know, use a smaller dry brush. I'm just using this one. But the reality is that we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of this with a thinned peacock green here next. And then it's gonna get dry brushed over with a lighter shade of green. Alright, so just uh, you know, go until you're happy with that. Now, got some peacock green. I'm gonna add some water to it. See the consistency there? It is essentially a wash. And I'm just gonna work right at the base of the crack areas. Or where the <laughs> crack, where the rocks and the pool water would definitely be meeting, just to establish that first line. Some gets on the higher edges, ring. That's fine. It's it's you know, like I said, I'm trying to make it simulate a, a rise and a fall type of pool where sometimes it's it's got way more in it and you know right now it's a little lower and I haven't reloaded my brush I just you know loaded up just once and now with the gray underneath there's gonna be some lighter areas and some definitely some darker areas where the peacock green was down at the, the bottom of the recess I'm just I'm, I'm going about three quarters up I don't think I'm gonna go all the way up. I might in a spot or two just to kind of give a couple areas where there might be some glow because later on I might put a little more but I'm not trying to hit all of it. You can push some into some of the recesses because obviously you know liquid would definitely make its way in there but again do it do what you feel looks the best. I'll do these edges here because this is kind of a, and this is going to be the front of the base here, most likely. You know, if you have to put more paint on, that's fine. It's not, you can't, you know, be held to just one brush full of, of paint. So there we go. And again, we're going to put a lighter color of green next, so don't, like I said, don't think you have to get every single little little bit on the first first pass so we'll want to let that dry completely so that we're not uh, pushing too much of that dark green around because I don't want to lift it off of where the darker areas would be with the brush game color dark green got some on my palette here I'm gonna add some water and out a bit I'm gonna start out on the actual pool areas 
forcing it all the way around just yet. Only that inset area darker. Because it's a little thinner, it's gonna recess away and go on to the lower lower areas. So it'll take more than likely a couple coats. But let that dry. Do the second coat and we'll pick up again where I left off. So now the second coat has dried and we are going to add some scorpion green. Bayo game hair, game hair, game hair, scorpion green. And I've also got some glaze medium that I'm going to put on the palette along with some more of the dark green and we're going to start to work on some blending switch to a legitimately normal paintbrush I'm going to start taking this video game here scorpion green and putting it out on the outer edges here and this is a an airbrush paint so this color is designed, you know, this paint is designed to go through an airbrush right out of the bottle. So it's going to be really thin. I'm not going to add anything to it. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to kind of outline where I want some of this lighter green to go. Trying to keep it fairly smooth. A few places here and there. Outlined it. I've added a little bit of water to my brush. Now I'm essentially turning this into a glaze. Now over the dark green, it's going to dull down and kind of mute out a little bit. But what this allows me to do is kind of smooth out some of those areas where it wasn't going to let, you know, there's going to be darker green areas. So this is going to help smooth some of it out. And it kind of sets the, the line of where, okay, I want that to be brighter. And then I'm going to start working in the darker green. So while that's kind of starting to dry, I'm going to take some water and some of the uh, glaze medium and start to work that up a little bit and thin out that dark green. Because I want to put some of this dark green up on where the water line or the chemical line would be. I'm just going to start working that now and get that out of the way. And it's it's fairly thin. You can see here you know, it's not not super opaque. This is going to add a little more to the illusion that there's a rising and falling tide of a chemical type of pool thing. If I get some on the edges and everything, that's fine. You know, if it splashes around or, you know, I don't know. I'm not, not over there looking at this thing, standing next to it. But I am gonna let, just kind of let it do its thing right off the brush. All right, so now we've got most of the area. Given some of this thinned out green, it's gonna mute out as it dries. We'll start working this green in between the two as it dries. And you can see it's already going to start to kind of go over the scorpion green. So I'm just going to start working the border between the two.
Now I'm going to start doing the back and forth game here. Now with as thin as the video game here, game, <laughs> game air is, this is not going to be a, oh, I've got it in one, one pass and I'm done. So it's going to require some, some back and forth, a little bit of on, on palette mixing. gonna let some of this just ride and dry and I'll have to let this this layer eventually start to, to dry on its own otherwise I'm just gonna be fighting myself so in some of these areas that I kind of knock loose so now that I've set those Gotta let uh, some of that, some of that uh, glaze medium and that retarder that's in the uh, the airbrush paint as well. It's gonna take longer to dry. So once you kind of get your lighter color and then your secondary color just kind of together, you just gotta let it dry. So go find something else to do or work on something different. But you gotta let this dry completely. Otherwise, you'll lift it off and you'll end up having all sorts of problems with it. So now the initial setup of uh, the two colors has dried. Now it's time to start reinforcing those colors. So I'm going to come back in with a nice heavy coat of the scorpion green. Because it, it's the lighter color, it's going to take more effort and more time and more layers to coat and adapt its color to the uh, dark undercoat there. So. Be patient with it. It's going to take several passes. It's just the way it goes. All right. So now again, since this has airbrush medium in it, it's going to be slower to dry, which is great because we are looking to kind of put this in next to this darker green. taking a little bit of that and just trying to wet blend the the edge of the color here and again I don't want to try to just get it all all the blending done right now but if I do that what's gonna happen is the scorpion green because it's now just starting to get a, a fairly consistent layer it's gonna lift off and you're gonna end up again fighting yourself and getting frustrated so this is basically step two of a several step process where you get to add a little bit and then go and find something else to do for a little while while the paint completely dries just using light strokes and I'm trying to blend some of this this recessed area so again, as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit of a, you know, obviously the, the, the blend, it's not gonna be as smooth as, as an airbrush, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. So again, let that dry. All right, so I've refreshed my paints here because it needed to be, they were drying out. But it's a, again, this is the next phase of the process here. You're just gonna keep going. I've actually added a little bit of the glaze medium to the scorpion green. So now when I go to add some of the dark green, they should start to play nice together. And at first you're going to have a bit of a, not a hard line, but just kind of a, a delineation, a clear delineation between the two. It's just going to be a bit of a, a back and forth. I, I definitely want to get some of that lighter, the green to kind of go lighter, 
and then since the the scorpion green is going to get some yellow at the end i'm not super concerned about bringing it this way so i'm just going to work with the line that i have now and just kind of more focus on having the, the dark green do a little more of the blending so this isn't necessarily the, the traditional way to blend everything but you know you're making a you're making a base it's not the the model itself i'm not saying that you should spend no time on it but if you're going to spend some time on a on a model you probably want to do it on the model itself and you know the base is kind of a it, it does kind of tie things together but this is this is the, the bottom of the model right here it's literally the bottom of the of the ladder of the totem pole everything else is on top of it so you know we want it to look good but you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours on it when you know you could probably get by with something a little better we're gonna you know use these these uh additives and paint thing you know paint uh techniques just to kind of give us a little more of a easy transition than sitting there and trying to paint every single last detail you know a small little panel on a on a miniature is one thing but you know this is you know it's an inch aside here and you got that's a lot to, to do so if you don't have an airbrush and you know this is something that you want to try out this is the this is a very basic way to blend even more basic would be to not use any sort of glaze medium or to thin it down and just basically you know take a little bit of dark green a little bit of the scorpion green put them together make a third color and then do a line for each one and you know that for at a distance your eye will see the transition it won't see the individual colors it's just like a pixel on a, on a television but you know this is this is a little bit higher higher level which you know it'll look better and you're gonna put it's gonna be more work so there's there's trade-offs for everything and then ideally what we would do is use really thinned watered down paint and we would blend the line between the two with a very very thin glaze and that'll take a couple layers so again depending on what level of work you want to put into this will determine the end result but if you find yourself just going back and forth back and forth not making any progress well either you haven't changed something to enhance the overall appearance or you might have reached just the limit of your current ability and that's that's not to say that you can't do it it just might be where you where you are right now and you just need more practice and you know there's plenty of things that I try to paint that I'm like yeah I probably could have done better if I'd have practiced on this two or three more times so just keep that in mind. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't look exactly the way you had it envisioned. So now I'm going to do both colors here. Try to just get a little bit of a wet blend going. And again, my, my lines are going to be visible. It's not... It's not going to make this all just disappear and everything's going to look super smooth. That's what the airbrush demonstration was for. This is just to show you that you can get a good result with brushes if you just start to work the transitions. As you can see, I've, I've almost got it to where there really isn't a harsh line. There is just a little bit there towards the darker green side, but once I let this dry, the next pass I make should get rid of the majority of that. And then once that's done, then I'm gonna to start to work the yellow from the outside in just a little bit between the light green. And, you know, I might touch some of this, uh, this kind of this half scorpion green, half light green together. I might start to touch some of that on the edges of these rock ridges to give just a little bit of a hint of OSL object source lighting but I don't want to do too much because then it's gonna look like I you know I didn't do it in certain areas so you know if there's a yellow glow then yeah you can do that kind of near that area but you don't really want to do it over here on this dark area I mean you could assume there might be yellow over here but if I tried to put the the glowing yellow down in here that would be kind of out of place so So the gist of it is really that working with 
thin paints, glaze medium, and glazes is that you've got to work thin, work in layers, and let things dry completely in between. If you don't, you're going to have a bad time. Also, I recommend you use a natural or a sable hair brush. Don't try to do this with a synthetic. It's they're too rigid, and because it doesn't absorb as much of the hold as much of the paint, it's um, it's just really really frustrating. It's it's not that you can't do it. It's just not something I would suggest. If that's a way to take some advice there, but you'll have much better results with a natural hair brush when it comes to blending. All right, so more of it's dried, and now it's time to start working some of the yellow onto the very far outer edges. And what that's gonna do is really make the, the highlighted areas pop. So essentially now I've got Flash Gets Yellow, Scorpion Green, and the Dark Green on my uh, palette paper here. And I've thinned each one of them down with, with just water. And the intent with that is that the water will thin it out to where I can glaze it, but it's not going to do anything to extend any of the drying time. Now, the yellow and the scorpion green are both air versions of the paint, which means that they do have airbrush additive into it, which, which does, again, slow the drying process. So just keep that in mind. I just haven't added anything to it. If you don't have an airbrush paint and you're doing this with that, that's actually uh, probably a, a bit of a benefit just because when you go to glaze it, you'll be able to have it dry. The layers will dry slightly faster, or I guess maybe significantly faster, depending on the, the type of paint, but um, you're gonna have a little bit of an e easier time getting those several layers of glaze in. All I'm doing when I glaze is I'm taking the tip of the brush and pulling it out to the area where I want the most amount of paint. And since I want more yellow to the outer edge, that's why I'm going in that direction. You can you can go sideways. That's fine if you if you need to get you know a certain direction. But the majority of my brush strokes are are away from where the blend is going to transition. And then once you've once you've kind of got that established with the first layer, you got to walk away from it and let it be. So this is where if I was working on several of these bases, I would go to the next base, or if I was in the middle of painting the miniature that goes on this, I would go back to doing that. Let this dry, you know, just don't think about it. If you sit there and wait for it to, to dry, you're just, you're not really efficiently using your, uh, your time to paint. So since I've got this end working, I've got the, the dark green that I can go in and start to work from the opposite side. So now I'm just doing the glaze on the inner side of the green, the darker green, to give me some, you know, to maximize the the drying time here to make it most efficient. And this is, it's super thin. It's gonna look like dirty paint water, but over time, as you, as you add it in, and I'm gonna try to avoid going left to right on these, because this is just gonna end up looking like stripes. You kind of, you do wanna get that, that directional brush stroke where you can. Um, some of it, it's going to be so small that you can't really do anything about it, and that's fine. But if the, the majority of the brush strokes are in one direction, uh, eventually it starts to mimic. You, you start to see those those I guess striations slight uh, into the uh, into the paint. So uh, you try to avoid that if you can. You know, if it's something that you're looking at trying to to move uh, past as a technique. So now. This glaze is gonna drive relatively quickly with the dark green just because it doesn't have any additive in it. And since it's you know fairly thin and mostly water, I can come back here and start doing the same thing I was talking about where now I'm pulling it towards the darker edge of the green. And I'm gonna let that dry. Now the scorpion green will be kind of tricky since it's in between both colors. I don't really want to mess with it while either one of those is wet. You'd think, oh yeah, I want to do that, but the glaze is so thin that if you try to put 
another really wet paint over another really wet paint, you can, you can swirl away and, and uh, you know, it's, it's like kind of, you know, throwing food coloring into water. It can just start swirling and going in different directions. So really, I'm, I'm kind of stuck right now to working the outer edge or the inner edge, not really, not both. Since I'm working with three colors, you know, that's, that's just kind of the nature of, of this, this situation. But as you can see, it is starting already, on, especially on this, this portion here. The transition is getting much better from the dark green to the to the mid green, the scorpion green, and then to the yellow. If you wanted to, you could take this yellow and thin it down really thin, and you could put it over everything when you're done after everything is dried. Uh, but because it's not sprayed on the way that I did it with the airbrush video, which I'll link at the end of this video, it ha will have a tendency to pool, so it won't be as smooth as you want. You can't just wash it on. You could you could glaze it on slowly, layer over layer, and you could just you know work larger areas. But if you just try to make a big old yellow wash and throw it on there, you're probably not going to be happy with the result. So as I've been discussing that, the yellow on the outer edge is uh, dry enough. So I'm going to get this very far outer edge where I want the most yellow intensity. I'm not worried about the edge because I'm just going to put some uh, black over that at the very very end when I'm done. I'm going to check my brush here. Got more paint than I need. Now I'm just going to feather that glaze over. And just like before, you can do this as much or as little as you want until you're happy with it or until you've decided that it's not going to look any better or it's uh, it's enough effort and you, you put everything into it and now you're you're happy so just doing the same thing on this side a little more yellow now you notice I'm not doing the pre-shade with the white on this and that's that's not because I, I couldn't it's just because I don't I'm not going to spend the time with it so I could do the, the white and then do the yellow over that, but it would be so much glazing that this video would be an hour long, and that's not really the point of this. It's to show that you can get a good blended transition with brushwork and a little bit of patience if you're not gonna use an airbrush. It also shows the efficiency of using an airbrush in this kind of situation. So even if you don't have one, if you know someone that does, this is such a simple like technique to, to implement uh, from the other videos that I have that you could, you could pick up an airbrush for the first time and probably get it Pretty, pretty close if not completely correct and the person that owns it would probably be more than willing to show you how they do their techniques and and probably be able to implement a lot of what I'm trying to demonstrate here to a pretty pretty good level so you'd be surprised what you can do with a little bit of a little bit of knowledge so all right so now I'm going to grab some of that scorpion green I'm going to pull it into the yellow. Again, it's it's super thin. It's almost like just dirty paint water. Like if you went to your paint rinsing mug or jar or whatever you use, it would it, it's. It's gonna look like that. It's not. It's literally not that thin, but it's it's pretty thin. So you can see, I put it on my glove here. It's pretty thin. It's just it's just real small steps, and that's really the key to super smooth transitions. So if you're willing to take the the time to wait for things to dry, and then work in in slight color gradients you can get just you know um, incredible transitions and that's what you'd have to do if you weren't able to use an airbrush or if you're in an area where you couldn't you know airbrush just wasn't feasible you've already done maybe a bunch of work and now you you've got a small area where you want to show off you know a really cool blend or something you know and that's where this really comes into play and in doing some some thin glazing You'll see me dab every now and then. That's to 
make sure that there's a, just a little, little blob of paint. As the brush leaves the surface, it's gonna leave just a little bit. And that's to actually kind of help break up some of the, the lines in the transition area. So I'm just gonna keep working this and that will be the end of it. Uh, I'll probably reinforce a little bit of yellow here, maybe try to work on this, this small transition between the dark green and the scorpion green. Same thing over here. But uh, after that, I'll just finish black edging the base and this will be complete. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Camo Specs online at Facebook. Give us a subscribe at YouTube. Post your questions and comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Try to answer anything and uh, make your suggestion as well for things you'd like to see. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.